Now before we start this part of the question, what I've done is I've updated the diagram with the coordinates of the point where the two lines intersect, which we found out from the last part, 1, 7, minus 3. Now for this part of the question then, we're told that we've got a point A then on the line L1. Let's just suppose that this is the point A here. And we're told that it has position vector 9, 3, 13. So the coordinates of this point A are going to be 9, 3, 13. So we can just suppose it's there. It doesn't really matter where we put it, as long as we put a point on this line L1. Okay? Um, you can put it on this side if you like, it doesn't really matter. We're also told that we have a circle that passes through A and the center of this circle is on the blue line L2 and it has, uh, let's say it's here, and it's the point C. Okay, so we'll just label this, say, C. So if we draw this circle in, okay, it's going to look something like this, say. Now, the circle intersects, we're told, the line L1 again at another point B. So this clearly is our new point B, and we've got to find the uh, position vector of point B. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is call this point M first of all. Okay, we'll talk about it in a minute. So I've got to find uh, the vector O to B. O is the origin. Okay, that I've put on this diagram. Now. To do this, what I've realized is that if C is the center of the circle, then obviously it's the same distance out to the circumference of the circle, okay, from the center. So in other words, if I was to mark in this distance from C to A, it's clearly the same as the distance from C to B. It's the radius of the circle. So we know that this length is the same as that length. So this means then that we've got an isosceles triangle. And because we established, or we were told actually at the beginning of the question, that this was 90 degrees, then in an isosceles triangle, if you've got a line at 90 degrees, it's going to go up through the center of the base, and the base is AB. So that's telling me straight away that AM, the length of AM, is exactly the same as the length of MB. So I'll mark two dashes in like that. Now this helps a lot because now I can work out the vector A to M and to get from O to B all I need to do is to go from O to A and then do a couple of the vectors AM. So I go from O to A and then do this vector and do it again because it's going in the same direction as AM and it's the same length and it will take me to B. All right, so that just gives you an idea of how I'm going to proceed. Okay, so we start off first of all then by trying to get the vector A to M. So in the usual way, if you want to get a vector from one point to another, it is the same as going from the origin to M minus O to the first letter, in this case O to A. Now We've got the coordinates of M, so we know the position vector of M, the vector from the origin to M. That is going to have the same numbers, but it's written as a column vector, as 1, 7, minus 3. So we've got that vector, O to M. Now we need to take away O to A from here to here. So that's 9, 3, 13. So let's just put that in there, 9, 3, 13. And if we do that, 1 take away 9, minus 8, 7 take away 3, 4, and minus 3, minus 13, minus 16. So there's our vector, okay, A to M. And A to the M is exactly the same as I say as M to B. So we can go from O to B. If we go from O to A, followed by, plus in vector language, two lots of the vector A to M. So all I've got to do now is just 
put our vectors in. O to A is 9, 3, 13. 9, 3, 13. And then plus two lots of the vector A to M, minus 8, 4, minus 16. OK? And if you work this out in the usual way, you're going to have 9 minus 16. Well, that's going to come out as minus 7. 3 and 4 twos are 8. That gives 11. And 13 minus 32. Well, that comes out at minus 19. And there you go. There's the position vector of B. OK, well, I hope you've been able to follow that. And that brings us now to the end of this vector question.